Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to make a video, a tutorial about auto exposure and the controlling lighting with the camera's aperture. So as you know, Unreal with their cameras are trying to mimic real world cameras. And when you have a real world camera, the camera's aperture controls, that's one of the factors that controls the lighting hitting the sensor is if the aperture is low and the, it's wide open, it lets in a lot of light. If the aperture is stopped down and it's at a higher number, then it lets in less light. A lot of people might think of aperture as controlling focus, but it's actually also controlling how much light gets in on the sensor too. So Unreal's done a good job with mimicking real world cameras, but it can get really, really confusing because there's so much going on. You've got your cameras, you've got the actual lighting in the scene, and then you've got auto exposure, which is also called eye adaptation. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was auto exposure itself. Now the good news is by default, it's turned off. So eye adaptation is turned off by default, so you don't have to worry about it for the most part. So you can almost just forget about it completely if you don't even want to mess with it. But it comes up as an issue if you're trying to control lighting with the camera's aperture, with the cine camera's aperture. By default, I wanted to show you, the game comes, we're in the third person template. It comes with a post-process volume already in it. The first thing you can search for is something called infinite extent unbound. And this means that this post-process volume is affecting our entire scene. So that's already set by default. Now within this post-process volume, and you can almost think of this as your game settings to a certain extent, you'll see here that auto exposure, it's triggered, but because these min and max values equal each other, it's disabled. And if you just hover right over it, it says, eye adaptation is disabled if min equals max. So if that's zero equals zero or one equals one, it doesn't really matter because it is disabled. The values matching each other like that. For the most part, you don't even have to worry about it. For the most part, you don't. The only time this would come up is if you're trying to have the aperture on a cine camera mimic a real world camera, which there might be instances where you want to have that done. And if you come up here under lit, you'll also see there's a game settings here and it's set to EV100 as well. And that's what's enabled by default too, are the game settings. So when we hit play, basically our lighting is perfect. And whether we go into the shadows or wherever we go, there's no adaptation occurring. There's no auto exposure happening. So one thing we can do, I'd like to do right now, is just kind of darken this scene up. And this is another variable, is that we have scene lighting as well as all these other things going on. So if I hit Control L, I can make this look more like dusk right there, right? So I'm darkening the scene just by messing with the lights in here, right? Nothing to even do with the exposure or anything else. I'm just going to hit G and turn off the gizmos. Now what I'm going to do to show you some things is I'm going to get a cine camera. So I have my place actors tab open here and I'm just going to go to cine camera actor and I'm just going to drag this into the scene and we're just going to turn it so that we can see some lighting here somewhere. Maybe I'll raise it up a little bit more just so we have some variation in the lighting that we can see. Maybe I'll point it downward like that so we can kind of see what the camera is seeing. So let me go back into the scene camera right here and we'll keep an eye on it here in the corner. Like I was talking about a normal camera, if we normally on a camera adjust the aperture, it would affect the lighting. So right now at f2.8, the lens, the aperture is wide open and it would be letting in the maximum amount of light. And it would also have the shallowest depth of field. If I increase this, right, you would expect that the scene would darken, but it doesn't. So in that extent, by default, the cine camera is not mimicking a real world camera because as we open up the aperture, the, it doesn't affect the lighting on the scene. So this may be something that you want to affect and that's why I'm making this tutorial. So to enable this, to mimic a real world camera for the aperture to control our lighting, what we have to do is come up here 
and we're just going to type in exposure. And this is something that's confusing, very, very, very confusing, is that within the Cine camera itself, it also, whoops, let me go back. I didn't mean to lose that section. It also has a post process section that mirrors the post process volume. So we get into the situation sometimes of which one takes priority over another. So one thing that's important to realize is that if you want to film in Unreal Engine, you can film without being in the game. You don't have to turn the game on or hit play to film. You can film an entire movie without being in game mode, without the game playing. So here are the settings that we set for the camera will work for filming for the most part. It would change a lot of things if we tried to film in the game. We'd have to use a take recorder. And then in addition to that, the post-process volume settings would come into effect. Some of them might come into effect. To get our aperture to where we can control the lighting, we have to, there's this one setting. It's already turned on, you'll see this. It's already set to true. And if we click here, this just means we can change it. But by default, it's set to true. So we don't even have to do anything with that. But we do have to set the metering mode to manual. And notice what happens when, as soon as I did that, the, the scene went blank here, right? So we can't even see anything at all. So what we have to do actually is put on some exposure compensation here. And let's just increase it a little bit so that we can see. I just took it to seven. And now watch what happens. If we go back to the aperture here, if I search for aperture here, it's wide open. Watch what happens when I increase it now. See how the scene darkens and lightens now? So now our camera is mimicking a real world camera. As we increase the aperture, the scene darkens. Here, if we wanted the scene to be maybe even brighter, I could go back to exposure here and increase the exposure compensation however I wanted to do that, right? So now if I come back to Aperture again, I could film this wide open and control the lighting with the Aperture as well. So that's just something good to know. Now if I hit play and go into the scene, I don't really have to even worry about anything the lighting in here is really being controlled by the lights in the scene and by what I have selected in the post-process volume. So if I go back to the post-process volume, let me search for that, and I click on post-process volume, the eye adaptation is off. But let me, let me do this. Let me search for exposure here. I'm going to show you something. So if I set the post-process volume to manual, like I did with the, the camera, now if I hit play, you see how everything is dark now in the scene. So this is a case where, where we go in the game, now the post-process volume is overriding the settings on our camera. For the most part, I think you would be filming not in the game, not with the game playing, but outside of the game. So this shouldn't be too much of an issue. So anyway, I just wanted to present this tutorial, just talk a little bit about auto exposure and how to set your camera up so that it actually mimics a real world camera. But this is just kind of where I'm at. I found it very difficult to get clear information on this situation of the camera settings versus the post-process volume settings. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.